Like this place isn't a secret. People know about Green's Pond. It's definitely raised its profile recently. But what I've noticed here is it's not just like a tourism town. This is a working community. It kind of feels a little bit redundant to talk about friendly Newfoundlanders in a place like this, it's specifically in a place like this. Newfoundlanders are friendly for the most part in most places, but here it's definitely, definitely obvious. Right? I had a few experiences with business owners, you know, the hub of the north. It's a, a restaurant and, and lodging, really, really nice place that I didn't know about until after I booked my place, but the restaurant that I was able to try and the people that worked there were just so helpful answering any question that I had and just generally like responsive to any of my requests. It was really good. The other, the Hilltop Bistro, Hilltop, Hilltop Takeout, not Bistro, Hilltop Takeout, part of Marine Takeout, Dykes Marine Takeout. It's a confusing name because there's a bunch of businesses within the one. Had a conversation with the woman that worked there for about 10 minutes while I was waiting for my food. You know, my Airbnb host, we had a problem with the lock on our door. She came, she lives just outside of town, well not just outside of town, about 20 minutes outside of town. She ran down with new locks, doorknobs, everything, installed them herself, of course, <laughs> and took care of the problem like super fast. The stereotypical nature of Newfoundland really shows through here in Green Spawn. So this is the Greenspawn Historic Courthouse and they just did a bunch of work restoring things and the project basically was completed at the, the mid to late August, so recently. But they do stay open, volunteers run it, and there was a lot of communication between myself and the, the people that are trying to, uh, to keep this thing open and I just wasn't able to coordinate while they were here. So. You know, I'm not able to get inside today. And even today, people were trying to like work things out so that they could get me in. But it's it's supper time now, and I, I gotta get back to the family. I don't have time to even go in, even if they were there. But it's just another example of a beautiful building that I was really excited about. Still excited about it. I'm glad to see it from the outside, because it's impressive. But I'm not gonna be able to get inside today. There's a population of about 300 people here in the sort of peak summer season. And a lot of these residents are seasonal and there will be a lot of people. People have already started to leave. I spoke with a, a woman at the restaurant uh, up on top of the hill. She said that there's about a hundred people or so that are seasonal and they come from all over basically the United States and Canada and they will leave of course once the weather starts to turn a little sour <laughs> or in my opinion sour. Some people love the winter but basically the town's going to be you know a little sleepier and a lot less going on in general. Restaurants will be closed. They're already sort of starting to close. I'm walking towards Ida's place right now. It's just up ahead of me. They're already down to weekend hours. And I mentioned in another video how I missed out on visiting Ida's by about five minutes. We got in on a Sunday at about five to five. Couldn't find a place. So we missed out on that. But uh, that's the reality of a town like this. But it's not a tourism focused town. This is a working community. You see the, the fishing boats coming in about nine in the morning after an early morning run out on the, the inshore, which is you know, the, the life's blood of Green's Pond, the inshore fishery. And that's still happening. And you get the feel here that this is a, a normal working community, despite it being a you know, very small community. The hope for the future with tourism is real here. This place is... <laughs> on a very very short list of the most beautiful towns in this province and it's not a secret people know about Greenspawn it's just it hasn't received as far as I can see 
the investment, oh, can you hear the rooster? <laughs> hasn't received the uh, the cash injection of the investment that, you know, Bonavista or Fogo Island or Twillingate has yet, but it's definitely coming because this place is just incredible. thing going and laid it all down It's been 500 days since I've left town And I don't remember why I drove away Please understand, I'm barely scratching the surface of Greenspond. I'm exploring the, the architecture, the old houses and buildings and the town itself but there is a, a network of, of walking trails and basically one huge one that goes all the way around the entire island and then a bunch of detours so that if you don't feel like doing the whole island, you can take shortcuts. But this is a beautiful, beautiful coastline, pretty unique. There's a few other places that, you know, kind of reminds me of Fogo Island. Of course, you know, this whole coast, I don't know much about, but I knew about Wesleyville and New West Valley, like based New, the greater New West Valley. And uh, this is a pretty barren, relatively shallow water coastline so it creates a, a very different landscape than anywhere else that I've seen in Newfoundland really so it's probably a beautiful walk but I'm not going to be doing it this trip I just don't have the time and traveling with family so I don't really have the ability to just do everything on my own but I will be back because this is one of my favorite towns that I've seen so far I say that a lot in my videos but I keep finding these places that I never visited before that just open my eyes to things about Newfoundland that I never knew about. So I'm gonna be back, I'm gonna explore the, the coastline at some point, but I'm not doing it this time. But just know that if you came, if hiking, going for beautiful seaside strolls is your thing, you have a great, great trail to follow here in Greenspond. And you start right here, basically. Weary of all the sunsets, all the yellow and orange and red. Beautiful morning in the beautiful town of Greens Pond. It's actually pretty calm and warm and sunny, and just you know, brings out the colors that people have painted all of the, the fishing sheds and the houses with there even more. And just something about the the clouds and the grayness of Newfoundland that when it goes away, even for just a short period of time, it makes it that much more impactful. It's so beautiful here right now. I mean, I can't imagine painting a, a, an idyllic fishing town and coming up with anything other than this. But it is a particularly beautiful morning. And it's too bad we're actually leaving this morning. I'm gonna miss Greens Pond. I think this is uh, a little bit eye-opening for me. I'm gonna make sure that I don't skip over it if I'm heading up Highway 320 in the future. You know, Lumsden is a major draw for people, and it should be. It's a beautiful beach. And if you come to Greens Pond, you got a detour for 15 minutes or so off of that highway. So it's 15 minutes in, 15 minutes back out, and you can't just pop in and pop out of here. You have to spend some time. So I suggest factoring in a little bit of time to, to come here 